Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. So, I thought I would start out today celebrating our third year anniversary with a song, a prayer. Preserver and protector of all. Without beginning are you, Lord, without end. None do beyond compare, and none can measure you. Without color, expression, or form, nor attributes to lend. Conception by our minds. None can divide you, O oh God, you are eternal. None can see you but with eyes divine. You always were. Angel. 
preserver and protector of all. Without beginning are you, Lord, without end. You are named Isa, the only one worthy of worship. We sing the you. Baba, as you all know, that's a uh, Pete Townsend. So I thought Hi. I'd deliver. Sorry. Hey, Baba Angela. I just wanted to let you know Charles's internet's gone down, so we're working on that now. Oh offline. dear. Okay. Well, I'll deliver my address, and then we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> so I have a few remarks, and then hopefully Charles will be back, and then after that. We'll uh, open it up to everyone who wants to share. So, greetings and so much love to all of you. It's so great to be celebrating Baba Zoom with you. My name is Angela Lee Chen, in case you didn't know, <laughs> and I'm the founder and coordinator of Baba Zoom. I'll offer a few words, after which Charles Haynes will deliver the keynote address, hopefully. After his words of wisdom, the floor is open for all to share freely. I wrote that in because I didn't want to forget. <laughs> As Baba Zoom rounds out three years of Zooming together, the call has gone out that all are welcome to join, participate, host, and otherwise volunteer their energies and efforts. With time, slowly, we see that the divine challenge of all inclusivity is that there are some people that just seem to rub you the wrong way. <laughs> A dog sled is set up with dogs individually connected to the sled at lengths that allow them to run in pairs. When a sled handler finds that two dogs do not like running next to each other, they adjust the pairing so that the pair are not next to each other, yet are still pulling the sled together. We are dogs in the metaphor pulling together for Baba. The difference is that he does not need us to pull his sled. He's God. He can accomplish all his work without us. Hence, the new life will continue, even if there's no one to live it. Baba was perfectly capable of doing everything for himself. Yet he specifically relied on his mandali and others to carry out his wishes and see to his needs. He allowed himself to be bathed, his hair brushed and nails clipped. He voluntarily kept silence. He dictated message for others to write out and send even when it took great effort to be understood correctly. Being served is not always easy. Things don't always get done the way you would do it, nor at the time you wish it would be done. To voluntarily choose to be dependent was clearly part of Baba's divine work. But he's not helpless. He allows us to help. It is our honor and privilege to come together in his name and his remembrance. And everyone, everyone without exception, contributes something to the whole. All alone, we would be lifting a heavy burden. For a single dog trying to pull a sled, they cannot even get the sled to move. With another dog or several helping to pull, each dog is able to run full speed while managing the weight. When we come together, when we remember Baba's love and compassion, when we hold that we are family chosen by him to be together in his love, then we can find a way to pull together. Some examples of pulling together. Thousands of Baba lovers around the world watch our growing collection of recordings, now numbering about 1,500. About a hundred regularly join the live Zoom meetings, often up to seven meetings every day. About 40 people regularly log in as tech hosts and hold space for others. And a group of 10 keep RT going every day, twice a day, for about 2,200 RT sessions and counting. We maintain an email list, a Facebook page, WhatsApp groups, a YouTube channel, a community directory, 
and a bulletin board for community news. All of these resources easily accessible in one place from our website, babazoom.net. In these three years, we've also organized crowd fundraisers and service projects. Many volunteers pitch in in a supportive environment where so many help out. If you haven't joined the fun yet, start today. Coming together as a community is wonderful and the benefits are self-evident. We inspire each other to love him more deeply. We share ways to remember him more completely. We learn to trust him more profoundly. We understand what he left us more gratefully. And we hold the space for others as they go through suffering, transition, loss, or trauma. It's beautiful. Baba Zoom is an all-inclusive community. And as a community, we have offered great service to each other in ways we may not fully understand. Great things are accomplished when there is compassion, empathy, consistency, and steadfastness. In 1968, Baba said, there will come a time when your love will bring me to your own house, your own room. There will come a time when I will be seeing my lovers not at one place, but at thousands of places at one time. It is your love that can make it possible. And that's from Lord Meher, page 5363. With the help of technology, that time is now. Your love has made Baba Zoom your home on the internet. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Yay. Jay Baba. That was a wonderful talk, Angela. Really oh, nice. thank you. <laughs> Jay Baba. So nice in every aspect of it, really. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah, Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you, Baba. And it's been bigger than I could ever imagine. It's wonderful. Yeah. Wow. And will continue to be. Yay. <laughs> As long as we pull together. Bob so, is having a little bit of fun with us. He says, uh, oh, you think technology makes it possible, do you? <laughs> Sorry, Baba. Only you make it possible. Only you. <laughs> Only you, Baba. <laughs> Look at all these smiley faces that enjoy Yes, this. it's wonderful. We all love it so much to be here and to get to know each other. From all so places. if... If we want to go into a little bit of sharing right now, we'll just uh, switch the order a little bit. If there's anybody wants to say something about Baba Zoom. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Okay, hey, Baba. Um, I think that these times were quite magical. And um, like I, I said in the chat, you picked up the torch and ran with it. And but then again, you had amazing posts. Um, shout out to Ruthie, Betty, um, for a while, Joe, um, Shalaja, Debbie Nordeen, a Sing with Baba, you know, uh, loot, ba loot His Name, so many wonderful programs and concerts and um, bringing us all together like beads on a string from all over the world. How incredible Baba orchestrated with this lockdown that gave us this gift the lockdown was a terrible thing on so many levels. And yet, what a blessing bringing us all together, meeting friends we met maybe one time in India, um, new friends that we've never seen in person or hugged in person, um, creative energy flowing through us, new songs, the sharings, the poetry, the discourse readings, so many, so many, the treasures just, um, incredible. And, um, and many of you know, I early on, I had this dream. I my first Baba Zoom was Mara's day, May 20th, 2020. And um, then I learned there was RT every day, then I started going to RT twice a day, because there was nothing, to do. well, not not nothing to do, but my, my schedule was cleared. Um, and early June, Maybe just two weeks into going to these these RT, 
Baba, I had a Baba dream and I was up in the ethers. I was in space, which is oftentimes if I lucky enough to have a Baba dream, I've had several dreams with him, with me in space and the nothing. And he was showing me and Betty was there. There were some other people there that I didn't recognize, but Betty was one person there. And she, he said, this work is very important. You are creating a light grid around the planet by doing this. So that's all I have to say. Um, Jay Baba, so much love to everybody. And yes, this, this, our Baba family does support us all spiritually, emotionally, and when we're going through things. And it's, it's what a gift. Jay Baba. Thank you, Baba. Yeah, and all those wonderful benefits are benefits that I feel too, you know, feeling like we've met people and I <laughs> haven't even seen them in person yet. It's amazing. Like to feel like I know more about a person and I haven't even seen them yet. It's it's an amazing thing. Yeah, and that support. Ron, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say one of the things I love is the this idea, which is a fact that we, and, that, and, I, and I really appreciate the fact that you found this room, this virtual room that just is there and, uh, and people use it and make, make use of it and can find some camaraderie and some companionship there and uh, expressing themselves uh, and all the people that can use their talents at hosting uh, the events and, and the gatherings and the meetings and all these things. It's just a, a wonderful thing. I don't want to name all the hosts because I don't know them all, but you know who, you, everyone here probably uh, knows that all these meetings have uh, uh, skilled hosts. And of course, technology is a rough deal. I mean, it doesn't work all the time. I mean, half the time it doesn't seem to work and it's kind of frustrating, but if it wasn't frustrating and, and didn't work, how would we get a chance to exercise our patience and our tolerance? That's what Bob is here for, to help us to, uh, you know, have those opportunities. So here, you know, you've got so many opportunities. Again, the companionship and the and the frustrations and all the, the whole package. And uh, so, thanks to everybody who attends, everybody who hosts, and and uh, Angela in particular, who found this place. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. One uh, one side comment to that, Ron. I I uh, I completely focus on the passion, the excitement, the enthusiasm and the technical skills come after you know what i mean so uh so you mentioned all these tech skills we don't start with skills we start with passion enthusiasm willingness to serve and uh i think that that's a good policy for finding volunteers <laughs> charles you're back yes <laughs> ah here we go so we'll uh let's see <laughs> we'll continue the sharing after so i charles. can't tell you how funny that was that was because you know, I would join and then I'd put in the passcode and they'd say that doesn't exist. And then I put in a, a, again and it did exist. And then Bundy didn't exist. So. <laughs> it, oh, gosh. Yes. Well, so the Baba phone, had a little joke because, option, uh, you know, I couldn't get the phone option to get get me in. Right. But in the meantime, the Internet comes back on. So there you are. There you are. Baba yeah. had a little a little fun with us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Am I up? You're up. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, you're going to laugh at this. This is my, uh, the, the topic today is Baba's humor. <laughs> and and, and I, I'm assuming you're laughing too. I can't hear you all laughing, but I'm just going to assume you are because <laughs> because that was really funny. Um, Baba was having having fun, or at least that's what I think. Uh, well, J. Bob, everyone, I'm glad I made it. I almost didn't make the third anniversary. Um, but I, I heard some of you already saying wonderful things about uh, Baba Zoom and, and what it's meant. And so I won't gild the lily by repeating all that because I tell Angela 
and Ruthie and others, every time I'm on it, how much I appreciate it. But I, and I can't say how, I mean, so many people have said that this has been a real contribution to their life. And, and in some cases, a real lifeline, you know, to, to grow and, and, uh, and Baba's love by having this community. Um, pandemic or no pandemic. I mean, this has been, cre this has created a, a new way to have a community. So, so thank you uh, to Baba for making it possible. And then for Angela and Ruthie and others for carrying out what Baba has clearly planned uh, as he plans everything so beautifully. Well, so in this, <laughs> here we are in the spirit of this celebration, uh, I, I am going to focus on Baba's humor and uh, uh, because it just seems just seems the right topic for for this occasion. Uh, famously, Baba said, life is a mighty joke, as you remember. And he said, he goes on to say, he who knows this can hardly be understood by others. He who does not know it finds himself in a state of delusion. He may ponder over this problem day and night, but will not, but will find himself incapable of knowing it. Why? People take life seriously and God lightly, whereas we must take God seriously and life lightly. Then we know that we always were the same and will ever remain the same, the originator of the joke. This knowledge is not achieved by reasoning, Baba says, but is the knowledge of experience. I think we would all agree that the beloved's boundless sense of humor is a defining trait of the avatar in this advent, uh, perhaps only second to uh, his infinite compassion. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I thought the other day, if Marijuana had decided against becoming avatar, he, he could have had a great career as a comedian, no doubt about it. <laughs> he was a very, very funny man and a, and a, and a, a funny avatar as well. Um, you know, when I was growing up, Kitty and Elizabeth would frequently remind me in different ways how central Baba's humor was to his life and work. Uh, and even when I first started speaking publicly about Baba, you know, back in what the, <laughs> the 60s or 70s, whatever it was, um, <clears throat> Elizabeth wrote to me in this while I was in college and she said, giving me advice about what to put in the talk. And she said, uh, do not forget to bring out Baba's sense of humor. He is not austere, as you well know, her typical understatement. Well, even though I tried to weave Baba's humor, you know, when I could, weave it in when I could, Kitty apparently thought I was a bit deficient in the humor department. <laughs> she, so after giving a, a talk at the center, one evening, I was I was driving Kitty back to Del Ruba, and uh, I asked her, you know, if she had enjoyed the evening, enjoyed the talk. Oh yes, she said, quite good. Then she paused and said, "I didn't know you were funny." <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe I should try a little harder. Uh, but now, whenever I try to be humorous around the house, Christopher likes to say. I didn't know you were funny. <laughs> so that, that, that has stayed with me these 50, 60 years, whatever it is. Uh, now, I know many uh, who are on this Zoom today well know that being around the Mondley in, in those decades after Baba dropped his body uh, was to be constantly reminded of Baba's humor. Uh, Mani and Erich, of course, loved to tell, uh, as did others, but particularly I, I remember how they loved to tell uh, amusing stories about life with Baba um, and and how uh, they and the other Mondly enjoyed, just as Baba had for so many years, funny skits and songs performed by the, by the pilgrims. Um, Pindu was particularly 
uh, excited about anybody performing something funny or, or doing a funny program. In fact, when I sat with him outside Mondley Hall, uh, you know, on many days, and I would ask him before the program was due to begin in Mondley Hall, I would say, Pindu, um, are, are you going to the program today? And he would look at me and he would say, is it funny or is it serious? And I would say, you know, Pindu, I think today it's serious. And he's, he would say, I'm not going. <laughs> I only go if it's funny. <laughs> he would have missed a lot of my talks over the years. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> he, he, he would have not come. Uh, or maybe he would have come out of love. But, you know, he wanted to go to only the funny talks. And, um, and one day I... Um, I tried to do skits for them occasionally that were funny. And, and, and one day I did my father Chuck imitation uh, with some trepidation because it was pretty outrageous. You know, I'd put on these robes and the big tea cozy on my head. I don't know. So some sort of amalgam of a, of a religious leader. And, and, and I would uh, do then the Southern evangelical uh, uh, imitation, you know, about healing. You know, and I would I would say, I would touch somebody's body part, and I'd say heal, uh, heal, and you know, like that. And they laugh so hard. Mondly people laugh so hard. I looked over, and uh, Erich, Erich was wiping his eyes with tears. He was laughing so hard, which made me very happy. Later, um, um, I think it was uh, Dr. Gohair. She came up to me. And she said, you know. Are there really such people? <laughs> yes, there are really such people. You know, it was not really that far off. Uh, well, life with Baba then, life with Baba during his physical lifetime, and life with Baba now is animated by his constant sense of humor, although we don't always get the joke. Um, <laughs> So that's why he has to turn off the internet, just to re remind us who's in charge every once in a while. Um, but I, I thought it'd be wonderful to have Mara describe his humor because, um, because you know, this was something that was very uh, important to her. She says, Baba was very childlike and enjoyed fun and funny things. He himself was very witty and clever. With the slightest, slightest excuse, Baba would find humor in a situation, and he used to amuse everybody. Baba had so much serious work on his mind, and he told us that humor lightened the burden of it. He was so lovely, Baba was. He is still beautiful, but you cannot see him. Isn't that wonderful? He is still beautiful, but you cannot see him. Mara would also sometimes remind pilgrims, I'm sure those of you who were there during that period remember, you know, of how challenging it was for Baba and his silence to tell funny stories and jokes. Well, it was, she would say it's challenging for him, period, in silence, that he took on silence and that made it hard for him because he loved to tell stories and he loved to sing and he couldn't. But despite that, ha that handicap of not being able to say it out loud through the alphabet board and then later just through gestures, Baba managed to tell stories and convey stories, humorous stories, uh, as well as serious ones. But he did it, they said, in such a lively, exciting way and he would often, you know, act out the various parts in the, in the story, the various people. He would use gestures and facial expressions. Um, it's extraordinary because there are some stories that Erich retells has in his, the various books we have of his, uh, Erich retelling stories. And he would, Erich would say, Baba has gave us this. And Baba acted out all the parts. Uh, so Baba, it must have been really something to see to see Baba doing that, in silence doing that. 
And of course, uh, he had to signal to Erich uh, when it was supposed to be funny and when it was supposed to be serious and any gradation in between. <laughs> So, I mean, Erich, Erich said, you know, you had to be very alert to his facial expression because you wouldn't want to say something serious in a funny way or a light way, and you wouldn't want to say something meant to be humorous in a serious way, right? So he was very tuned in, of course, to Baba's expressions uh, so that he would know the tone. It wasn't just the content. He had to know the tone uh, of what Baba uh, was trying to convey. Ba Erich put it this way about um, Baba's humor. He said, Baba's sense of humor was so perfect that even relatively minor things could become a great source of amusement for us all. Uh, there's a one of, one of the favorite, of my and I know you know this story, but it's always fun to repeat these great stories about Baba. So uh, one of my favorites that Erich would tell about humorous incidents is about the time Erich was driving Baba during a must tour. They were in a car and, and Baba happened to be seated in the front beside, beside Erich. And they came to the outskirts of a town <clears throat> and the crowd suddenly became very dense. So the car could barely move. And so Erich described what happened next this way. He said, I was concentrating on inching the car forward, trying to find a path through the sea of humanity, impatient because Baba was always in a hurry when we traveled. And I thought he would not be pleased at this unexpected delay. <clears throat> but as I was driving, I suddenly became aware of Baba's body shaking. I could feel the vibrations in the car seat and I glanced over and saw that Baba was laughing heartily. In fact, more heartily than I had ever seen him, seen him laugh before. Of course, Baba made no sound when he laughed, but he would go red in the face and his body would shake with the laughter contained inside. When I saw Baba in such a mood, I was so surprised that I asked him, why are you laughing? And Baba pointed to the side of the road. Up ahead where Baba was pointing, there was a shrine of some saintly person. That was, what, that was why there were so many people on the road. Apparently it was the anniversary of the saintly person's death. And so many people were coming to bow down and pay their respects. Yes, Baba, I said, uh, not being able to see what was so funny. <laughs> And Baba pointed to someone in the crowd. Well, there were so many people, it was hard for me to know which, whom Baba was pointing to. Baba gestured that the man was wearing a hat and a coat, but there were many who were. That man, I asked, as I described the man, I thought Baba meant. Baba shook his head, no, he pointed again. Oh, that man who's just about to bow down at the shrine. Baba nodded. Yes, and then Baba gestured. He is bowing down to himself. <laughs> and, and from this, I understood that in a previous life, that man had been the saintly person that had come all, that all had come to honor. But see the fun. The saintly person in a new incarnation had also come and was now bowing down, bowing down in reverence to his own tomb. This fun and illusion was a great joke for Baba. <laughs> uh, so, as you may know, Baba also loved practical jokes, and there are so many examples of, of that. Um, but just one little one that, that I particularly like, it, that Delia records uh, when she was in India. And Delia says that Mohammed the Must was still at Meherabad. And, and then we were told a story about at, at, at one time that he kept demanding that Baba produce his wife. No one knew if in fact he had a wife, but eventually to humor him, Baba told him that he would see her, he would see her, his wife, that afternoon. 
And then Baba had one of the women in the village dress up to look like an awful old hag and presented her to Muhammad as his wife. This completely cured him of his desire to see her, and he never referred to her again. <laughs> uh, so and Delia adds, thus does Baba comply with our instant, insistent desire in order to make us free from that desire. <laughs> so she gives a little moral to the story. And I think actually a lot of Baba's practical jokes and humor exactly right. You know, Baba uh, is, is doing what he does so well, and, uh, taking our ego down just a little bit. You know, as you also know, I'm sure, because I'm speaking to many of you who've been with Baba for so many years and you know him so well, but, you know, if you're around Baba when he was in the human form, best to have a story, a funny story, always at hand. Um, you know, in the early days, I, I was reading this recently and, and I thought it was very sweet where Mara said, you know, Baba would ask us in those early days for stories and we didn't have any. <laughs> And Baba said, no, no, tell, you know, some funny incident, you know, from your childhood or something like that. So finally, I think Mara thought of something and she told it to Baba and Baba was, enjoyed it so much, thought it was wonderful and all that. And Baba said, very, good, very good. The next day, Baba said, uh, tell me a, a funny, another funny story. And Mara said, well, but Baba, I don't have the, any more funny story. That's the only one I have. And Baba said, okay, tell it again. So Mara told it again. And this happened for several days. <laughs> and but Mara said, and this is so sweet, it's because it's Mara, right? Mara said, this is early Mara with Baba. And Mara said, you know, no matter how many times I told that story, Baba would laugh just as much each time. <laughs> so, so touching. How Baba, how Baba treated Mara was so touching. Now, Mani, of course, uh, was smart, and then she came along a little later than that and to live there, and she would uh, have a, a books of jokes, you know, so that she could always have something ready, ready for Baba. Uh, and you may remember that she used to talk in Monley Hall about the jokes and uh, that she'd have ready. And, I, I, and honestly, I'm not good at remembering jokes, unfortunately, but so I don't remember them all. I hope that they're on tape somewhere or, or all of you remember them. But um, uh, one, one I do remember, she had a book of Tommy jokes. You remember the Tommy jokes? Because she told us a number of these. Little boy Tommy, you know, he's like, I don't know, six or something like that, little boy. And uh, one day in school, I think they were in Catholic school, it sounds like, um, the teacher asked uh, the class, where does God live? And Tommy's hand immediately shot up. He started waving it, you know, and, and the teacher said, yes, Tommy, yes, Tommy, where does God live? And Tommy said very brightly, oh, in the bathroom. And the teacher looked at him and said, Tommy, why would you say such a thing? Oh, Tommy said, because every morning my dad stands outside the bathroom and he says, oh, God, when are you coming out of there? <laughs> uh, and Baba enjoyed it so much. Baba loved that joke. Monty, Monty said Baba really loved that joke. And I don't know why. Maybe that's why I remember it so well, because Monty said Baba loved it so much. It is funny. Well, you know, for me, uh, even as a child, or maybe especially as a child, I was aware of Baba's humor. I was a serious little boy, but I loved humor, and, um, and I was aware of it. And as you can see from the glimpses of the 1958 film, the, the birthday party and those things, Baba was fond of teasing us, uh, the children especially. And uh, and especially serious children like me, 
<laughs> Bob was constantly looking away to looking for ways to tease us. We didn't have that much time with him, you know, but it, but it was just his way. And uh, you can see in the film how it, it, with that little game he liked to play of, of throwing the prasad at the at, at us or at the crowd at adults too. He would do this, but particularly us. He would he would you know look at us and then throw it another direction and then look another direction and throw it at us. And it, it was very funny and, and it amused Baba greatly. Um, and or or he he might give the prasad like he does in one scene with three B. You know he give she he holds he's holding the prasad and she reaches out to grab it out of his hand. She's just behind him, and he grabs it back. And then she tries to snatch it, and they go back and forth. And Baba, you can see by the expression on his face uh, how amused he was by this little game. Uh, there's one incident at the in the 1958 Sahavas that I may have told some of you this before, but <laughs> you're hearing it again, <laughs> like it or not. Um, and in, I like it because it involves my mother and her coming to Baba at that time, <clears throat> that first time with him. And, you know, in those first days, she felt very drawn to Baba. She felt she wanted to love Baba and she wanted Baba to love her. But she had not really had her deep experience yet. Uh, that came on May 22nd, and she met him on May 19th. So there was that period where she was, you know, as she put it later, she's kind of, she was veiled, if you will. She was really happy to be with him and all that, but she didn't really have that inner recognition yet, which is uh, what Baba gives, and when the moment is right, as you know. So one morning in the barn she at at that time would go and take the seat in in the back you know they would have some seats way in the back and the some of the older people would be there now she wasn't older but she you know she just wasn't anxious to rush up and get to the front so she'd just take her seat way back in the back so you can picture that baba in the front where the fireplace is and then some of the people sitting on the the floor and then mother all the way in the back with some of the older ladies you know sitting on one of those uh chairs <laughs> and um at some point baba stops the discourses uh, as he would do and calls for jokes you know a joke baba always would lighten the mood you know with a joke and uh, this particular day Baba said, uh, called on Harry Florsheim to tell the joke. He said, Harry, you know, yesterday when you were in my house, Baba's house, you told Baba a joke. And Baba said, it was very amusing. So I want you now to get up and tell everybody the joke. Well, of course, Baba was working on, on Harry as well this day. And so this was a joke that he thought would be funny to tell, you know, in the privacy of Baba's house with a few of the Mondley. He did not anticipate telling this in front of everybody. And part of him, he said later, was a little embarrassed that this is the kind of joke he would tell Baba you know in his house and anyway he had to get up and tell it because Baba had told him and Baba of course was enjoying this discomfort very much and Harry uh Florsheim gets up and and uh once he gets up and gets into it then he gets animated you know and he tells the joke and I don't I don't can't find anybody who remembers the joke well, they're all dead. <laughs> so it's too late to find out if they do. But uh, I mean, mostly all gone. You know, I think there are a few of us survivors, but most of us are <laughs> Baba's taken away. So 
uh, uh, nobody, I can't, I don't know what the mother didn't remember what the joke exactly was. She said it had something to do with an elephant and a sports car. So you can use your imagination. I'm not sure <laughs> how that turns into a joke. But anyway, she um, is sitting in the back and he starts to tell this joke and it is off color. Let's just say that it's not obscene, but it's just, you know, off color joke. And this is Remember, mother grew up in the South. Now she was in the theater and all, but still, she grew up in the South and she had very, you know, sort of strong uh, preconceptions, I'd say, <laughs> about what's appropriate in front of the Christ, you know, and for the Christ and so forth, and what he would be like and all that. She brought all that to meeting Baba. Uh, because she had been told he is the Christ. And so by Elizabeth, you know, so, so uh, she's sitting back there listening to this joke. And, and what's going through her mind is, well, I, I don't know if he, if he's the Christ, why, why would he allow such a joke to be told in his presence? And in front of all of us, you know, like that, this little off-color joke. And that's what she was thinking. But typical of a Southerner, a Southern lady, particularly in those days, she turned to the person next to her and she didn't say what she was thinking. Instead, she said, she whispered to this, this lady next to her, well, huh, I didn't even understand it. <laughs> As soon as she got that out of her mouth, Baba claps. And he says, it's not Harry. I'm sorry. It's Mickey Florsham. I don't know why I keep calling him Harry. Mickey, stand up. Baba wants you to tell the joke again. Jane didn't understand it. <laughs> and, you know, in that moment, Mother says, in that moment, all her preconceptions about the avatar, the Christ, or whatever, what he should be or shouldn't be, wiped were wiped away, just completely wiped away in that moment. And then poor Mickey, he had to get up and tell this stupid little joke again. <laughs> This time he couldn't get into it. I mean, he was like embarrassed by, <laughs> by this. And so Baba got his mileage out of this joke for everybody. I'm sure other people were having something going on, but for my mother, it was a very important moment before Baba gave her the inner experience of who he really is, uh, which uh, this cleared the way, if you will. Uh, humor cleared the way. Uh, so East-West Gathering too, Baba's humor was on display. You know, it was a very, Baba was more, how shall I say, for me, I mean, I'll just speak for myself. And since there are very few people left who were there from the West, I can say this and nobody's gonna be able to contradict me. They're all gone. Um, but, uh, you know, Baba seemed to me to be a very kind of more godlike, if you will. And that's to say less interactive and, you know, his health was, was such. So part of it was that his body was, his humanness was limited now by his health, but his also something about his I don't know what, about ready to release himself. I, so I can't really describe what I'm saying, but maybe you can get that sense just from the films and the photographs, how different, how much difference four years made, you know, from 58 to 62. Nevertheless, Baba, in those morning sessions with the Westerners was still his very lively, amusing, interactive self. Um, but it was just a different atmosphere and and not as much, you know, Baba asking as many questions of us or we asking of Baba, things like that. 
but the humor was there. The humor never, never left. And uh, uh, if Baba wanted to make some, make um, a point and he wanted to be humorous, <clears throat> he often would depend on Anita Villard uh, to be his foil or his, uh, you know, yeah, his foil to, 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 because he could always de depend on her uh, to be, to be witty and, and, uh, and, and to get it, to get what he was doing. So one moment I remember, and this is the way I remember it, um, Baba said, um, he was talking about longing to see him as he really is, and the importance of that, you know, that this is not Baba, you should long to see me as I really am. And as he was saying this, you know, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I was feeling, I think others probably were too, you know, yes, that's wonderful, Bawa, but here we are. This is, this is what could be better than this, you know? But, you know, Baba kept saying, long to see me as I really am. And at one point, he decides to kind of go around the room and ask people, do you want to see me like this or as I really am? And of course, we all knew the right answer, but we didn't. I'm sure it was just, you know, people kind of mumbled, yes, we see, want to see who you really are. You know, they knew what Baba was, was getting at. <laughs> And finally, Baba turns to Anita and he says, Anita, how about you? Do you want to see me? Would you rather see me like this or see me as I really am? And Anita, without missing a beat, said, both, Baba, <laughs> which was the perfect answer. And Baba laughed. Baba enjoyed that very much. Baba laughed. And he says, yes, he says. But he says. It, that's yeah i baba said i want you to long to see me as i really am and then we all were kind of abashed i think you know like oh yes of course baba and then after a pause baba said baba said but i know this is wonderful too which made us all feel so much better, you know? Because I had no imagination for anything greater. And I'm sure I wasn't, I'm sure I was not alone in that. <clears throat> well, being around Kitty and Elizabeth growing up, you might not think was very funny, but actually it was always a light and loving atmosphere. Sometimes unintentionally funny, but also it was light, which is, you know, what they learned from being around Baba in India all those years. It's like, you know, if you're going to be around Baba, he prized cheerfulness. He prized happy expressions, even if you weren't feeling well or if you weren't happy. Baba prized it. And of course, humor. So people, you know, learn to have a joke prepared. Um, now, Elizabeth was not a joke teller. <laughs> Neither was Kitty. <laughs> but Elizabeth, but but Elizabeth was not a joke teller as such. Um, uh, in fact, sometimes I would say something that I thought was was funny, and uh, uh, and and she would look very uh, disturbed, like, oh, oh, goodness gracious! And I said, oh, but Annie Boo, that's a joke. Oh, she said, I see. And finally, one day, she said, you know, Charles, maybe it's best if next time you say first, you start by saying, this is a joke. <laughs> 
which I, I learned to do with her. <laughs> I make sure she knew I was trying to be funny. Uh, but she herself had a very, very uh, consistent sense of humor. She had a dry wit, if you will, that was pretty constant. And for example, one night Wendy and I were um, were <laughs> were leaving to go to the movies, and Elizabeth was sitting in in the in the living room, Del Ruba, with a book in her lap, and the the lamp was on. I remember, and we came over to say good night to her. I said good night, Annie Boo. Good night, and she said, "Where where what movie you're going to see?" Oh, I said, Annie Boo, we're going to see the Poseidon Adventure. Oh, she said, what's that about? And I said, well, you see, it's about a ship, a cruise ship that that sinks. And the, the movie is about all the people struggling to survive. And she looked up at us and she said, goodness, who would pay to see disaster? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so that was her kind of humor um uh even towards the end you know when she was very ill and uh and she took her dinners in bed and mother would take her a tray with the food and all that and one night she mother came to get the tray and take it back and she looked at elizabeth's plate and she said oh but elizabeth you haven't eaten your beans and Elizabeth looked up without missing a beat. She said, well, they looked like has-beens to me. <laughs> uh, she loved plays on words, as too. Now, there was a famous moment with her that I think all of you know, but I'm going to tell it again, that was unintentionally funny, but captures the spirit of the house at that time. So this is in the days when Elizabeth and Kitty would do just about everything, you know, and they insisted on answering the phone, the people coming to the door, people leaving, people coming to lunch. And, you know, it was just a constant chaos. And then there was the dog and the cat and, you know, all this going on. And so it was pretty much chaos. And um, Elizabeth is in her office, which means her bedroom, sitting on her bed, which means that's her desk. And uh and the phone rings next to her and she has it right there and she grabs it right and she picks it up and all this in the midst of all this chaos she picks it up and she says hello who am i <laughs> which pretty much captures that whole era at del ruba who am i uh but um Kitty, of course now, we tell funny stories about Kitty. I have told funny stories about Kitty over the years. I even did this in 1962 when the place we were staying, I'd tell people Kitty stories because they love to hear them. But, and Kitty never minded. But um, Kitty, with all the funny stories, Kitty, of course, as you know, was brilliant. She was a brilliant thinker. And, um, uh, you can tell from the talks she gave that have been collected now in a volume that, that Wendy and Buzz edited. And it's just amazing the, 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 the intellectual and, and spiritual uh, uh, wisdom uh, of, um, of Kitty. So I say that because, you know, sometimes, you know, you, like stories about Norina told in India when I would go over the years were always these little funny incidents as though that was that was how you remember now Norina, you know, as being this and that and throwing away something we needed and so forth and so on. Well, that of course, people are much more than those those funny stories. So I say that. Um, she was brilliant, and um, but she she had a wonderful, wonderful sense of humor, <laughs> mainly manifesting in her ability to laugh at herself, right? I mean, she was, and as Monty would told me once, Monty said, you know, Kitty was, was such fun. So she always had this capacity to laugh at herself. And um, she didn't get jokes. Mara was like that too. You know, Mara, you had to explain the joke. <clears throat> but with Kitty, by the time one ended up explaining the joke, as you know, if you have to explain a joke, it suddenly becomes very unfunny. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you had to explain it to her in excruciating detail. But the funny part was that when Kitty actually finally got it, she would start to laugh and she would laugh and laugh. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, oh, now I see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> she'd shake with laughter so she would eventually get it but then then uh she would start to laugh now she made us laugh all the time with her malapropisms or what we uh, margaret crass i think dubbed kittyisms and so we had a whole bunch of them unfortunately although margaret said we should all be writing these down we'd make our fortune one day with a book of kittyisms i don't think we ever did but you know but i remember some of them, and they were constant, you know, almost every day with Kitty was a there was a Kittyism. So one day, for example, just an example, she came back from the beach and um, where she went to walk the dog, and she was a little late getting back. And so we were already at the lunch table all eating because in Del Ruba, when lunch time came, that was it. Dinner time came, that was it. You could be there or not, but that's when it started. <laughs> And Annie Boo was at the front of the head of the table with her little bell, and that was it. Um, and and so she uh, came in a little late. We were all around the table, and Kitty was just in this exuberant mood, and you know, having just had the dog with her, and she said, "Oh yes, beautiful day on the beach. People in dogs lying in pairs all over the beach." <laughs> started to laugh. That's the most wonderful vision you know uh it was so funny there were people and dogs lying in pairs all over the beach uh, of course one of the most famous kittyisms is is one everybody has heard by now and that and, then, and that's when kitty had her book room and she met with people and talk about all their issues and then she'd or she'd sell a book or whatever that was before we no longer could sell books at the center <clears throat> and so anyway she and and as you know this famously one day somebody kind of comes into the screen after she's had people in and out in and out in and out all day you know getting a book or telling her about their issues and you know in and out in and out she she looks up and there's this figure at the door and she says oh oh yes are you a book or a problem <laughs> which which uh, for all time reduces kitty's day right down to the core of what it was are you a book or a problem um but i have to say that my favorite of all time if i could choose one kiddieism and i hope some of you have not heard this one because it's even if you have it's still funny um is um when we went to pick her up at the airport in myrtle beach and she had been to uh, to England, and I think her brother was still alive then, so I think she had seen Herbert. <clears throat> and she, of course, saw the some of the other old timers were there. Delia was there, <clears throat> and uh, and Dorothy and Tom Hopkinson were there. And uh, you probably know of them; they were at that time quite elderly, and um, they had written a book about Baba. Um, and they had been with Baba for many years, <clears throat> Dorothy and, and Tom Hopkinson. I think he was actually Sir Tom Hopkinson, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, very nice people. So we get in the car, and Kitty uh, is sitting in the back with me, and there's somebody else and mother in the front, and we're we're going back. Uh, uh, to Del Ruba, taking her back to Del Ruba. And mother says, well, Kitty, we could tell something was not quite right. I should tell you that. When, when Kitty, with Kitty, if, if there was something not quite right, you could always tell she was always sort of like she was holding something in. Like this. Like that, like something she didn't want to say. So I could, we could tell. And, uh, and mother said, Kitty, uh, what is it? Did you something about your trip? Did you have a good trip? You 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 seem to want to. Oh no no no! Mustn't say. Mustn't say. And mother said, "Mother's driving along." Says, 
Well, Kitty, it, it's it, what is it? You can you can tell us what it is. It's, it's all right. Tell us tell us what it is. Oh, oh no, terrible. It's just terrible. The mother said, "What? What's terrible?" Oh, Dorothy Hopkinson. Dorothy Hopkinson. So what? What's what's wrong? Is something wrong, Dorothy Hopkinson? Oh yes. Oh yes, it's terrible. Mustn't say. Oh yes, what? What's wrong with her? Oh, yes, she has gonorrhea. <laughs> drove off the road. <laughs> I know we're all gonna die. Ah, and then and she mother gets back on the road and says, oh, oh, Kitty, Kitty, what? Oh yes, definite. She went to the doctor and he said you have it. He's terrible, terrible thing, mustn't say. Oh yes, terrible. And I said, and um and so we we all fell into silence for a moment and then then I I gingerly said, you know, Kitty, um, <clears throat> that seems hard to believe because, you know, gonorrhea, <laughs> gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> and Kitty went, oh, 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 no, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, no, <laughs> like that. Ah, and in real shock. And mother's driving along. Finally, mother pipes up and says, Kitty, do you think you might mean she has glaucoma? And Kitty goes, oh, oh, yes. Yes, definite. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yes, gonorrhea, definite. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is my favorite Kittyism of all time. And there is actually... Uh, a footnote to that kittyism, how Baba must have loved having kitty around, right? Um, the footnote to that kittyism is that some time much later, uh, mo my mother's having eye trouble and she she goes to the eye doctor and uh, somebody asks Kitty one day, well, you know, how is Jane? Did she, she went to the eye doctor. Oh yes, she said, she went to the optimist and he said, everything is going to be just fine. <laughs> Which was so wonderful, but that wasn't the best part. Mother had to go back to a specialist, right? Because her eyes were just not good. And, and so somebody, I heard Kitty on the phone with somebody who was clearly asking how mother was after going to the ophthalmologist or whatever it was. And, um, to to see what the real problem was here and kitty said to the person well i don't know if the person knew uh, uh, what mother was going to but knew that mother had been so ill and so she was asking kitty about jane how is she doing oh oh terrible news just got this terrible news jane you know she has gonorrhea <laughs> so hard i thought i was gonna die <laughs> and you know who knows what that person thought after that about jane or any of us but anyway um life is a mighty joke bawa tells us ah and to help us awaken uh, ourselves to him Fortunately, he infuses humor in our lives. And um, because Baba says he wants us to take life lightly and God seriously. You know, I was watching recently, re watching the Van Gustrom film. I've forgotten what they're calling it, you know, but whatever it's called, the footage that Louis Van Gustrom took of Baba in 1967 which is so incredibly beautiful. Uh, just, uh, as you know, just the most beautiful film. And, and also the live sound with Baba, synchronized with Baba and, his, and Erich interpreting his gestures. I mean, that's just, I think, except for the newsreel, I think that's all we have of Baba recorded sound around Baba. I think that's right. Anyway. Um, it's so beautiful, it, it, as I'm sure all of you know and feel too. Um, but I noticed something this time that I hadn't quite focused on, and that is Baba's little humor at the end of it. 
or towards the end of it, <clears throat> or the end of the part where he's sitting, you know, outside and he's being interviewed by Louis. Um, and, you know, Baba is gesturing and Erich is interpreting. And one thing I thought was very interesting about this film is how you get to see in real time Erich interpreting and how at points sometimes he can't quite understand what Baba is saying. You know, I don't know. I think one picture is Erich is just fluently interpreting, but no, some points Baba made him start over or Baba gave a gesture and Erich would have to, to test out what Baba was saying or which missing letter was it, you know, because there was no, no J and so was it K, you know, like that. So I love the film for that as well, as you really get that experience of Erich interpreting. <clears throat> um, but the humor creeps in, at least it did for me at the end, when Van Gustrum, of course, wants to know Baba's final message. You know, and uh, now, Baba could have said anything. But typical of Baba, he comes back to that which nobody really ever asked him about, at least none of his lovers ever really asked him about or particularly cared about, at least that's what I think. And that is this breaking of his silence. Baba would always bring it up. So, you know, okay, Baba, Baba in giving this little last message, final message, and Luis asked him two things at once. So what is your final message? And then what do you think of the film industry or the effect on film has on people or something like that? Kind of an odd combination, but he was getting in his last two questions. And Baba said, all right, I will, you know, I'll answer, I'll answer both. And um, so Baba says something to the effect of, you know, um, I've been saying to my lovers, you know, over the years, I keep saying I'm going to break my silence. I'm going to break my silence next year, and I'm going to break it next year. I'm going to break it next year. Or something. Like that. <laughs> and Baba says, and then it doesn't happen. And then Baba says, "I'll let me give you an analogy of the doctor. Let me tell you about. Just say analogy. So let me tell you about the doctor who comforts his patient by saying." that the patient will be cured in seven days, let's say seven days, when the doctor knows it's going to be a month. But he says, you know, seven days. Um, so Baba says that's how, that's how he, he is, you know, he, he wants him to have feel hope and all. So then Baba says, I'm like that doctor, you know, I say this, break my silence. But now he says, I am positively going to break my silence soon. And then I'm looking closely, and I've watched it a few times. You see that little smile appear on Baba's face. Just, just a, that, you know, little smile. And he says, he says, you see, the patients are getting towards the cure. And the patients are getting impatient for the cure. <laughs> the patients are getting impatient for the cure. Life is a mighty joke, Baba tells us. He who knows this can hardly be understood by others. He who does not know it finds himself in a state of delusion. He may ponder over this problem day and night, but will fi find himself incapable of knowing it. Why? Because people take life seriously and God lightly. Whereas we must take God seriously and life lightly. This knowledge is not achieved by reasoning, but is the knowledge of experience. J. Bob, everyone. Wow, J. Baba. Ah. Charles, that, that's just 
the most amazing and appropriate subject. And it's so, so timely and so important to remember to take this whole Maya, Mayavic illusion, a little bit lighter. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a funny coincidence. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was trying to tell somebody about that story of that grandfather with a big old cigar going to meet Meher oh, Baba. Yeah. Maybe Mr. you could tell Mr. that story. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stowe. Oh, boy. You mean now tell that story? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well... You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'd be happy to tell a version of that story. I'm gonna say that um, I'm a little embarrassed about that story. You know why? Because I, my childhood memory of it, kind of made it into something with details that I thought I remembered, but then years later, someone uh, showed that me telling that story to uh i think his son who was still alive at the time and and he said well first of all my my i think it was i think it was uh his his son not his grandson but i'm not sure he said first of all you know we were it was his son's children who were there not his grandchildren see because i had him very old because i was like I don't know, seven or I was no, I was like nine or something. Anyway, uh, it was just after I met Baba when we would go see him, nine or ten, like that. So I had him really old and the kids really young. But of course, he wasn't that old and he had kids. So that's one thing. But it, but the more embarrassing thing is he didn't actually smoke a cigar. I had him you know, like with the cigar, and I think it's because my grandfather did that. And I kind of conflated the two people and 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 my and the gestures and stuff. So I I felt pretty embarrassed. And I told them, take that down. <laughs> oh, but it's <laughs> funny anyway. Let's just it is your funny story. anyway. So I'll <laughs> tell the story without the little the things that corrected version of it at least as best I can remember. And you know what? It's my memory, and you know it's always the thing. And I think Baba would enjoy the story even if my memory is is fuzzy uh, about it. And I hope that if he hears this version someday that he won't, if he's still with us, um, with any luck, he has been taken across the rainbow bridge and I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good thing about getting old. There's nobody left to correct you. <laughs> Just wait until it's no longer an issue. <laughs> what you want, you know, who's gonna know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna know? Oh my God! Uh, anyway, so what would what, what happened was this: if you if you, and it is a wonderful, actually wonderful story, and, and it because it's touching about Baba. That's why it's wonderful. Um, it, it, the uh, we would Elizabeth would go. I think maybe like once a year to see Mister Stowe in Yupon Dunes. And now, those of you who are not up to speed on this, he was the one that bought Yupon Dunes. And he actually owned all three properties, at, uh, I think, at that time. The Wyla Way, which was the home that Elizabeth was given to by her father. And her, she and her husband were given Wyla Way. Then Yupon Dunes, where Baba was. And then this third property where the Stowe's built a modernistic kind of thing. So there's three. And he, he bought it. And Baba approved the purchase. And um, so she, knowing how Baba liked this well what Norina used to call it was keeping people warm in the nest <clears throat> people you were contacted in contact with uh, and somehow were connected to Baba even remotely you keep them warm in the nest means until they're ready to fly and that was your responsibility with Baba which I always thought was very sweet and very touching. It was your opportunity with Baba. Baba can do his own work, but you know, it's your op one's opportunity. And, uh, and she always did that, that with people that she was connected to because the time will come when it's right, you know? And so she, and with Baba will show himself, but you don't know. So you keep in touch. That's how she was. So we would go to see Mr. Stowe and she'd take me with her. 
and it was it was great he was great fun and um and he <laughs> and every time <clears throat> elizabeth would take the the little film and you know show the little film of the birthday party and such you know so because that's the day he was there at the center and he liked to relive that and it didn't i mean i don't know how many times i went it wasn't that many but whether it was three, whatever, it wasn't, but it seemed to be, it was always the same. He always wanted to relive that and, uh, and just, and tell, tell me about uh, when he, well, as he put it, he said, you know, you know, I, I went to, I went to see the battle. And I said, I said, and I always pretended like that's the first time I ever heard. I said, you did? You went, yeah, went to see him, went to see the battle. He was, when he was here, I called up Miss Patterson and said, Miss Patterson, I hear the battle's coming. She said, yes, that's right. She says, yo, oh, I want to see him. And, and she said, well, you know, there, Bob is, is not giving interviews to the public. And, but she said, but you know, it might just be possible. She says, yeah, how's that? She said, well, because on, on one day, Baba is going to have a, a day with open day where for children, a children's party and the public can come if a child brings them he said oh okay well i got kids uh that's good and then when is it and all that yeah i want to come i want to come see it i want to come see the battle and and she said well that would be very nice and so he said uh, he told me he says you know and when i heard that i was real real happy about that and he said uh I asked my kids, I said, hey, kids, uh, you want to come with me? We're going to go see the Baba. And the kids said, no, they didn't want to do it. And he said, uh, kids, I don't think you heard me. I said, do you want to come with me to see the Baba? <laughs> and they said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, so, so we went and uh, the day came, we went to to the center down there and all that and uh and you know and then i was uh there's a lot of people around and and everything and uh i had my kids and i and i said uh i said um, to myself i said well where's the baba there's all these people where's the baba and then this man comes up to me and he's he's like he's wearing some indian like clothes you know and so i thought well maybe this is the baba and so i go up to him and i say uh are you the baba and he says no i'm not and oh i knew he wasn't the baba because baba doesn't speak <laughs> i knew that wasn't him <laughs> and he pointed me over there he said he's over there so you know i said i can come on kids we're gonna go see him and and you know he and he said he, he went he i went through the crowd and then, and then i got there and there he was right there the battle was right there. I saw him. And then he, he looked at me and he said, and you know what? I said, what? He said, when I saw him, I had this great peace come over me. He said, can you imagine a man like me having peace like that? <laughs> So that's my Mr. Stowe story. <laughs> hey, oh hey Charles, God. it's Dylan. How are you? I'm fine. I um I was wondering if you could add your story about kissing Baba. Oh, well, sure. Angela sure. said it was okay if I asked. No, yeah, that's fine. Um Uh, how to tell that story um, after laughing so much. Um, well, there is humor in it because <clears throat> Baba, um, you know, there was this thing where you weren't supposed to get an extra embrace or anything. You know, you got an embrace when you arrived. And Baba, again, Baba's health, and he had to see all these people. Even the Indian uh, Darshan people you know baba didn't actually embrace everybody 
he would put his hands out and touch them and all that like that. And then on the last day, because of the crowds, they came by and they 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 touched his feet, but no embracing. Um, and when we arrived, of course, when Baba first, we first got there, Baba gave us everybody an embrace. And then Baba said, you know, when you leave, Baba will embrace you like that. But I was um, not satisfied with that. Although I didn't ask for anything, I, I kind of made, made it known in a way, I guess, because every day in the morning gathering with the Westerners, we were supposed to clear out. And Baba would stay seated on, on the sofa there and we would all back out. You know, I backed out. I don't know what everybody else did, but I didn't want to turn my back on Baba. So I backed out. And uh, people you were pretty good about it, you know? They cleared the room, except on the last day, Baba left before us. But all the other days, we're, everybody's just, you know, backing out, backing out. <clears throat> and each morning for the first, I think, two mornings, three mornings, I remember, I would be backing out slowly, slowly, slowly. and. Um, Uh, Baba would see me and then he would relent. He'd go, Come. And so I did. I ran to him and I, I got an embrace. So I got used to it. <laughs> and I didn't care what anybody else thought, right? <laughs> really, I never thought about it, but I'm sure people were I mean, you know, when it's a, a young, I was 13. So I was like on the cusp of being a little too old for this to, to be getting these special treatment, but I was still 13. So then one morning uh, I'm backing out slowly, slowly. Um, and my mother is with me, backing out with me which is unusual because we usually weren't even near each other during this time. I didn't even know where she was most of the gathering. We're backing out together and Baba looks at us and sees us and he he looks, points to mother, he points at mother and then points at me and he says like this, like I'm pleased. Or... And then Baba looks back at me and he gives this something he's I've never seen him do before to me. He goes, he, he purses his lips. It's like, and I don't know where I come from. That means kiss. I mean, you know, I mean, years later, I've seen Baba do this in films, but, you know, so make that, you know, but. <laughs> I didn't know. So I thought that's what he meant. He he kind of had his hands partly open and his lips pursed. And so I thought Baba wants me to kiss him. And I ran. And I kissed him smack on the lips. I mean, right on the lips. And then I have to say, <laughs> so soft. So beautiful. I have to, I can remember that. Baba's lips were so soft. And I also have to say, I've never said this before, I think, in telling this story, but it's true. He's the first man I ever kissed. <laughs> it's true. The first man. I've never had that experience. And so I'm 13, right? So then I stand back and I look at Baba and then it, suddenly dawns on me, maybe I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> because Baba looks a bit surprised. <laughs> Not a lot surprised, but he looks a little surprised. And I'm thinking, or at least I thought so. So I'm thinking, well, was I supposed to even do that? And then Baba gave me that sweet smile and embraced me like that. And now go. And uh, and it was a kiss of a lifetime. I mean, no question about it. 
go back to that moment. But you know, I didn't tell anybody. Um, I think I was, it, it was so intimate that I, you know, so for many years, actually, I didn't talk about it. I mean, mother was right there, but we never talked about it. And I don't know whether she was embarrassed about it or I don't know. Well, we just never talked. And I just felt like it was too intimate to tell people. Maybe I was underneath a little bit embarrassed, like, well, why would I take liberty like that? I actually thought I was an invitation. So and Baba knows your heart. Um, and but still, for whatever reason, I just I wouldn't talk about that moment with people. But <laughs> Years later, after Baba had left the body, and I was in India, in, I don't know, his 70s sometime, uh, one of the trips. And um, I'm walking with Erich early one morning, you know. And Erich suddenly turns to me and he says, So, you kissed him. And of course, I had no idea that he even knew or, you know, remembered if, if he did know. So I was shocked because I never told the story. And I said, yes, Erich, I thought that's what Baba wanted me to do. He says, yeah how fortunate you were. We Mondly people had never seen anything like that. <laughs> so that was good or bad. <laughs> we had never seen anybody kiss Baba like that. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's my kiss story. <laughs> yeah, there Thank is you. humor in it. It's a beautiful story. Mm. Well, Charles, I think we're going to have to make it a regular thing. <laughs> Some time with Charles. <laughs> oh, I see somebody's put a beautiful picture of Gohair and Pindu and I. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I have this wonderful memory. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Bye, Charles. What's that? I took this picture July 1975. This is Ken Nunzig. Oh, Ken, you took it. Okay, yeah. wonderful. 1975. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's, yeah, I, I, I think I have a copy of it, but I didn't know who took it. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's been floating around for a while. But you remind me, you know, Pendu, of course, there's those shots where he has the funny signs and things. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. The slob guru is in. He used to wear that around his, yeah. <laughs> around his neck. <laughs> uh. Well, it's been wonderful to be with you on this anniversary day. And uh, Angela, what a great gift you've given us all through this. Only Baba. Yeah. <laughs> Uh. Jay Baba. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so I would like to switch gears and uh, see if there's anybody who'd like to share something about Baba Zoom or about community or well, Angela, anything along those lines. I was wondering, could you say that uh, this Baba Zoom also inspired the center to open up so much more in the last year with their sharing and online? I, I have no idea. And of course, India too, that's a lot. They would never give me credit for such a thing or whatever, but you know, in the end, it's all Baba, so it's all good. Right. Well, thank you. <laughs> Who knows? You know, they, they certainly didn't let me know anything about such an inspiration. But, but Angela, you never know. I want to start the RP there in the, in the barn. You were the first I think one. that uh, they'd been planning something like that for some time. Yeah. And you, you were the opener of it. No. 
You didn't know something? No. Can't oh. take credit for anything that's going on at the center. This is... It's a mystery how some things get done. Yeah, but I think everybody acknowledges uh, that I, in my hearing, whether it's Wendy Buzz, whoever it is that I've talked to, everyone acknowledges that this Baba Zoom has been such a, a, a game changer, really, in the Baba community. I mean, Wonderful. there's no question. There's never been anything like this that has allowed people to come together in this way from around the world. Um, and uh, and I do think it has set uh, a wonderful precedent for how this can be done um, with using technology, bringing people together. So yeah, you don't hear it enough probably, but it's true. Oh, J. Baba. Well, <laughs> as, as in all things, it's all Baba's doing. And uh, on some level, I will take credit for having thought about community for a very long time, you know, yeah. and how to create a, a situation where everyone feels equally participatory. And having done a lot of Baba event planning and then being exposed to the circle of friends, I'll, I'll happily admit that they were an inspiration as well. There is a way to allow participants to create the meeting as we go, which puts a lot less pressure on the host to know in advance everything that's going to happen and a lot less pressure on the planning part. So that's a big part of how Baba Zoom has this sort of loosey goosey feel, but yet still has all that love, you know? So I think that that's also hopefully an inspiration to other centers for how to be a little bit less top down and a little bit more bottom up, you know. There's no audition process <laughs> here, you know. We come from love. We don't have musicians go through some, you know, vetting process or speakers have to tell me in advance what they're going to say. It's like, well, participants vote with their feet or their computers. <laughs> so, it's uh Yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a different way of going about things, but so beautiful in the end result because people are very free and very welcome and very invited to participate as much or as little as they want to. Yeah, J Baba, I see some hands up. Diane. Good morning, good evening. Um, I hadn't planned on sharing, but Charles, you, you touched me so much when you talk and I realized that for all the people who got to go to India and meet the Mandalay and hear stories firsthand from them, that all of you who got to hear those stories now get to tell those stories. And Baba Zoom has become the platform for telling those stories. And that's what's keeping him so alive and my heart so expansive because of that. And I, I, I've met my best friend on this Zoom. I've met people and I've even gotten to Zoom in with them. I've met them and been able to hug them, which has been incredible. But the intimacy that is shared on this platform is sometimes more than people I know on a daily basis uh, because it's so authentic. I, I say it's where the intersection of psychology and spirituality meet. And um, it, it just thrills me. And I can't thank you enough, Angela, for turning the key and then giving it all you got and then backing out when you needed to take care of yourself and trusting that you had built enough infrastructure um, to take it from there. And I hope that everybody that is in these squares today tells a friend who tells a friend who tells a friend and that maybe the different centers uh, around the, the world can also maybe loop Baba Zoom in more because we have the opportunity to grow and hear more stories. Um, 
that that's that's my wish. May it, whether it's Baba's will or not, I always am told that who shows up is supposed to show up. So thank you for all showing up, Jay Baba. Yes, very much so. Thank you all for showing up is exactly right. I feel that Baba Zoom is a platform. It's equally accessible to everyone and organizations should not feel that they have to have a separate organization from Baba Zoom. Baba Zoom is them also, you know, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we do get more interaction across centers and more interaction with centers through a platform like Baba Zoom. Um, I know that a lot of organizations seem to feel like they need to own their Zoom meetings and so they have their own login, et cetera, et cetera. But, how convenient, right? To have one login and one room open and people come and go and there's chat between, in my opinion, the chat in between meetings is as important or more. I mean, the point of it to me <laughs> of, of all this meeting and having a subject matter and getting together for that subject matter is so that after that meeting in that glow of Baba's love, we can actually interact as uh, people and individuals and get to know each other better and share the love more deeply and end up having conversations that last all until the wee hours of the morning. I love that stuff. That's the most fabulous part about Baba Zoom. Yay. Thank you all for participating and enjoying it because uh, without people inhabiting this Zoom room, it really would be just an empty little box. So, Michal. Hi, everyone. So, um, first of all, Charles, thank you for your talk. I have uh, seen some videos of you before Zoom time, uh, Zoom years, and, um, and your talks here are always, um, are always full of fun, serious as you are, and you are, uh, you have this bubbling joy within you that all the time comes out of you uh, with your imitations, with your smile, with your eyes. And so, so um, that's always, you, you have that in you so much and it's coming out always in all your talks. So, um, and thank you for your talk. They're always from the heart. They're always, um, on par, on level of the heart, and from heart to heart, in simplicity, and and on the same level. So it reaches the heart, touches the heart, and enriches the heart. So thank you very much, and uh, more, yeah, more and more. So, um, Angela, Angela, I dubbed uh, being a uh, Zoomy Wonder Woman which she is a Zoomy Wonder Woman. She just dreamt this up, you know? She just woke up one morning and dreamt this up and put it up even before COVID. And uh, I mean, Baba was, <laughs> was prodding her <laughs> to do so. <laughs> but he knew who he chose. He knew who he chose to go forward and do that. And she, wow, she went forward. <laughs> She ran into it. Wow. <laughs> and wow, what a work. What a job. And um, well, starting before COVID, Baba said, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to fall on all the world. So I'm doing this. And, uh, and in, during COVID times, when people were completely enclosed, <laughs> And as completely separated by this crazy idea of having to not interact. Oh wow! And and this was the place. This was the the platform. And and I was thinking, you know, each one of us, uh, being a Baba lover, that really love to interact with other Baba lovers because some don't have to and they don't need to, and uh, but those who do <laughs> um, have this place. And, um, and what happened was um, each one of us might have had a Baba meeting once a week or uh, once a month or has a harvest once every year. <laughs> and here we have it every day, every day. We have a Baba meeting every day. 
And I mean, RT every day, you know? So RT is, is, a, is a coming together of people who love to be together in Baba's love. And um, people tell stories, people sing songs, people, wow, you know, it's just so, so, so amazing and so touching. So this place is magical. And Baba is so much here. Baba's love is so much here. And I have met people that I would never, ever meet in the world. Never, ever. I mean, I'm looking at the pictures here. I met out of all these people um, in Marabad, maybe three. And, um, and we're meeting around the world. I mean, at the same time. This is magical. And it's, it's so much Baba. He's so much here. <laughs> And um, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, um, Baba, first of all. Much, muchly, muchly. Thank you, Angela. For, wow. For being a really wonder, a zoomy wonder woman. <laughs> uh, thank you, hosts. Thank you, hosts, all hosts, for being there every time, just consistently and being there, you know, and for initiating wonderful, wonderful meetings. Wonderful meetings that people want to come and, and listen to and be in part of. Thank you for the friendship and the beauty and the love that I'm seeing pouring out of hearts in the people here. It just makes me so, um, it just touches my heart so much. So, and the beautiful Zooms, I mean, the tape Zooms. The wonderful compilation of tape Zoom, that if I cannot be on Zoom, or if I want to hear some story, it started with a circle of friends and they have a lot of library of Zooms and uh, video Zooms and now we have. So if I cannot be in a program and I really want to hear, I want to listen, then I go to the Zoom. The wonderful concerts, the Baba music. I, you know, okay, you all know. So thank you very much. And Jamil Baba, he's Jay. He's Jay. Jamil Baba. Jay Meher Baba. Jay Baba. Yeah, I was uh, going to add to what you were saying that not only are we meeting each other from all around the world, but we're in their home. You're in my home. I'm in your home. There's something so intimate about meeting each other when you're just comfortably in your own environment and you're sharing freely about Baba and, and it is, it is a kind of intimacy. And, and I've gotten that comment, oh, people are like, oh, no, I don't do computer meetings. And I, but you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. That's okay. They'll come when they come. But uh, yeah, it's it. Like I say, it's it's bigger than I ever imagined. It's it's more than I thought it would ever be. It's, it's so meaningful to so many people including me it's so healing it's so loving and warm to be in with you all so thank you baba thank you baba marta so baba gave us the mandali then baba took the mandali baba gave us erich and his stories but then baba took erich but now we have charles Baba's left us with a jewel of Charles and all of his, I mean, the stories. The yes, dregs, the, the dregs, bottom of the barrel. The <laughs> but the love that comes through, there's nobody that gives a talk next to your sister too. The love that comes through, uh, awards cannot thank you enough for being so generous with your time, Charles. Thank you. And then also I want to bring up the point that the Zoom has, through the pandemic and even longer, it's become a therapeutic healing circle. I've heard people speak of wanting to take their lives, of being uh, so depressed that they can't live. Uh, we've seen our loved ones here that I've never met go through tortures of illness, disease, all kinds of treatments, you know, and here they are. I still look at their beautiful faces, all smiling. So this has gone beyond anything that I'm even Angela probably could have imagined, but I'm really sensitive to the pain that has been healed 
or at least supported in these Zoom circles in only a way that God could do. And I bow at his feet for that and all of you, Jay Baba. Yes, absolutely true. Having a community that meets every day is amazing. I think of RT as being the heart of Baba Zoom because it's a meeting that's regular and steady and every day, twice a day, every 12 hours. And there's people who come very regularly to RT. And so that becomes kind of the core of people who are attending other Baba Zoom events. And so we're all keeping each other kind of apprised of what's going on and in the community as a whole. And it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. It's like having a family that, you know, every day has a meal together. You know, you, you actually catch up with what's going on with the rest of the, the multifaceted world out there. And, and it's, it's just so loving and supportive. And I thank you all for bringing that heart, that Baba love. So it's, uh, it's bigger than any single person could do, as you all know. We're all dogs on his sled, right? <laughs> and Wendy. Hey, Baba. Oh, did I lose you? Oops. No, no, nope. you're there. <laughs> I'm not very Becky, but I'm better than when I started. <clears throat> thank you, Angela. Uh, thank you, Charles. Um, I, I'm the sappy one. <laughs> That's just who I am. I, there's no words. I have laughed, I've cried, shared my life here, listened to other people's stories, added them to my prayer book. I just feel so blessed because when I wasn't able to go to India anymore, travel period, not because of COVID, this just gave me a whole new platform to stay in the game and be close to Baba. And I love everyone I've met. I love the challenges. I love the stories, but the heart connection. You're in my home and I'm in your home. I love that line. Um, yeah, because the home is in the heart. Thank you. Thank you. I wish for everyone to feel welcome and part of the group. There's no, there's no definition of the group. The group is everyone and every, every soul who wants to participate. That way, there's no outside the group. So how do we define Baba Zoom if there's no definition of Baba Zoom? Baba Zoom is everyone, not only everyone, but everyone's dogs and cats and birds and turtles and, <laughs> and the crows outside the window when you unmute in India and the traffic noises too when, <laughs> when you know uh, why you're unmutes. To, Angela, you know why you're able to say that? Because you have the mute button. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if That's worse right. comes to worse, you just hit that button. I'm just teasing. No, no it's very true, though. It I mean, is true. you know, you have a way of, but you know, how Baba chooses people to do these jobs. I mean, you know, Angela would never have thought of this if Baba hadn't inspired it. And, uh, but you have to, Baba always chooses the right person, the person who has the particular energy and, you know, skill or insight to do a particular thing. And uh, like David Finster or Ward Parks or, you know, so many people who have done these amazing, innovative things, and uh, your your Baba's chosen well. Jay Baba. Well, Baba realized Angela is the only one that has thirty six hours in her day. We don't know how she does it. That's her personal work for her, her personal creative work and everything else. Ah, uh, you'd be amazed how much downtime I take. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's. It's because all of you pitch in and to Charles point, it's ironic also because Baba would often pick people who seemingly did not have any talent for doing that particular job and he'd make them do that job. And there's, there's a mystery to all of that too, but in, in all, in all, you know, in the grandest picture 
of everything that that is done in his name he's the one doing everything so it doesn't matter if we have talent or skills or but our enthusiasm that matters you know our enthusiasm our passion our love for baba that's the way i feel about uh about everyone who joins in on Baba Zoom. We're all participating, we're all taking part. The cat in Wayne's arms and and the kitty in Betty's chest, and, uh, they're all just equally part of Baba Zoom. The, how many Baba meetings can you say that a crying baby is welcome, you know? Just hit the mute button, it's fine. A baby can listen to the Baba meeting and how amazing, you know? That crying baby would be out of uh, an in-person meeting, but... Uh, very welcome here. I must say that Cliff also should be um, uh, mentioned because Cliff is the one who's also supporting actually um, Angela and all this work and allowing her this time, if much time, much input. And uh, then it just takes from the couple, you know, the time of the couple. So he's been supporting in the back and in the front also. also and, and he uh, cooks. And he cooks. <laughs> uh, I do zero. You Except don't. he cooks. <laughs> you do zero. You tabla, you tabla a lot, and you cook only for this and for the Sahabas, and you support and give that time and hold Angela, and also when she was uh, infirmary, in infirmary, you helped. Her. Oh my gosh! With the broken ankle, he cared for me so beautifully. You, Cliff, in the back background as well behind every great woman right <laughs> and Peter oh goody Peter you there yeah unmute there we go there um, I'm, on part I'm on my part-time job now okay um as I like I like to say busy in as I'm areas I have two jobs um, but it's a slower day here so far at the mining golf course. But I have so many great memories. Um, a couple of my good memories are being one of the early, early hosts of uh, RT morning and evening until I get, felt a little burnout and things start getting busy around town. Um, another great memory. Um, uh, I was sort of behind the scenes on helping Jeff get on Zoom. I remember... Um, Early on in the days, everyone was like, oh, why doesn't Jeff Walbertson get on Zoom? And I'm like, oh. and I remember the first night I showed Jeff, I'm like, oh, look, there's a, a platform. It's called Zoom. We, um, they do RTs and they talk to each other. And it's very informal. And I showed him and then like he became addicted to it slowly. And I just remember like showing him like, OK, that, like, here's the password. Click here. Uh, type this number in. Like, just remember this number. You copy and paste. But um, and then one of my uh, a couple of my funny memories are uh this was like years ago, but um, I remember coming out with fake names and sometimes in costume and wigs. I remember one night I pretended to be Angela, I think when you got like bitten or something by a mosquito or had a bee reaction. Yeah, it was and a bee, yeah. Different fake names. And I mean, you gotta play it up and have fun on Zoom too. Baba like mischief uh, sometimes. So uh, yeah, thank you, Baba. Thank you everybody and um, Che Baba. Peter once came on as the Ainer Presbyterian Church or something. He got me. I was really, I was convinced for about five minutes that he really was <laughs> some, some, some uh, Baptist minister from Ainer. <laughs> ah, Peter, you're awesome. And Michelle, I think you have a special guest. Yeah, we have a special guest and and uh, yeah, it is a beautiful thing. And sometimes people changing their name and Baba loved humor. And here we go. Uncle Lammy's playing us a visit. Uncle Lammy, Charles may remember this thing a long time ago. Oh, thank you so much, so much for knowing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we all this all this all to Angela. And uh, of course, the, uh, the people who are uh, supporting us crazies <laughs> we are poor little lambs who have lost our way ba, 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 ba. <laughs> we are poor little sheep 
We've gone astray, ba ba ba. Gentlemen, songsters of Fanasfree, doom from here to eternity. The Lord have mercy on such. As we ba 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 Thank you. <laughs> oh, fantastic. But Marvin really is a good reader. <laughs> and and yeah, everything everybody's saying and uh, Jay Baba and Cliff, he just keeps keeps the beat going. Um, and thank you, Baba. Jay Baba. I said all my things already. <laughs> Jeff's late night chat. What would we do without that? What would we do and without Festa, Jeff Overton? Festa sharing her stories and being there and how how so many of us got close. And I was thinking there was a comment about, you know, all our homes are being brought together. And Baba said that the center is, is in our hearts and our home is the center. And so Baba's joined all these centers together, which is so cool. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. And Margie and Peter's late night chat. Wonderful. Fantastic. So many amazing programs. And I wish I could attend them all. I mean, then I really would need the 36 hours a day. <laughs> RT Jam mornings, RT Jam Saturdays. Yeah. Hello. So fun. How fun. How fun. Just so much fantastic programming. And it's thanks to all of you that chip in and participate to make things happen. Speaking of Ruthie. <laughs> Jay Baba. Well, I can't say anything. Everybody said it all. And I'm grateful, Baba. Thank you so much for this opportunity and time with you in the form of all your lovers. Uh, I just want to say this one thing. So here's the funny part. Thank you, Charles. Such a great talk. We just need more and more lightness in our days and in our lives. Thank you for bringing Baba's humor to us today. So I went and had a colonoscopy done. I was in the hospital, had to have a colonoscopy. So they give you that medicine, you know, and I woke up and I was on my side and there were screens everywhere. You know, I mean, they're monitoring me, but what do I know? I wake up out of this, you know, place and I look at the screens and I say, oh, I know where I am. This is Baba Zoom. And they say, what? And I say, Baba Zoom. And of course, they just ignored me from there. But yeah, I woke up and I thought I was on Baba Zoom. Jay -ba. That's uh, so great. That's you so are. Great. You are. It's so real a place that we wake up in it. <laughs> no hands up at the moment, but I thought I'd lean on Betty to say something. Uh First, Angela, may I say something? Oh, yes. Marja Pan, feel free. Charles, thank you for sharing the, your kiss with Baba. I felt in so doing, you shared that kiss with all of us. So we all got a kiss from Baba. Thank you. And also, it to me, it explains even more why you're such an incredible speaker. I mean, you got the direct kiss from mouth to mouth from Baba. So thank you. <laughs> That's Passing true. Passing it on. Passing it on. That's you know, true. What, came, what came to my mind is singing. I can't tell myself. So many of us, I found a singing voice. I never thought I could sing. Uh, and it's always, and so many, so many of us have, <laughs> and singing is 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 an expression of Baba. It's uh, it's uh, it's internal. It's uh, it's re oh, it's rhythm. It's Baba's Baba's music, and so many of us have found that we could do that here on Zoom. <laughs> bravery, bravery is part of it. Finding courage to do that has been such such a release. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Angela. Oh, yeah.
room and then on, on Barbara's room. <laughs> On Betty's, on Betty's, what do you shy folks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's I adore the shy folks concert. To me, <laughs> I always encourage people to, to sing in RT where they were shy because it's the voice of the heart, I think, you know? And here we are, we're just at home, just singing for a few friends in front of the computer. I mean, you know, in front of the computer sounds weird, but it's it's a... It's it's a way of kind of having an audience without having them in your face, and and I think that that's what Jeff Wolverton found. You know, if you ask him, he cannot get in front of a room with a microphone and a stage. No, he 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 sweats. He wakes up in a cold sweat every day for two weeks before he has to actually speak in person. And here he is speaking to hundreds of people on the internet. <laughs> comfortably thank you peter and uh without any uh without any holds barred he's he's found his medium i just so love that. so so for april 1st when charles ah. is due to uh speak in the center we should do like an april fools on jeff and like be like okay and now jeff walberton <laughs> <laughs> i say let's do that what uh, kind of wig would that be <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to give him a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not yet. Peter, you're in charge of mischief. <laughs> yeah, that's a really Good funny man. April Fools. Oh, he really would. <laughs> he we would really freak out. Of... He would freak out. He would never come again. Oh my gosh, yeah, he might quit the center if you do that, right? <laughs> we can't have that happen. No, no. <laughs> Uh, There's a limit, right? <laughs> Michal. When Rusi told her story, Rusi, when you told the story, you wake, <laughs> you wake up and you are in the Baba's room. That's for sure you are. <laughs> and but um, I think I was doing a lot of Zoom at the time, so <laughs> it just felt natural that that's where I was. Yeah, and let's say that she was doing a lot of zooming, uh, beautiful zooming and heartful zooming. But what came to my mind immediately when you told this story, the, the word zoom, we are all zooming into Baba. We are all zooming into Baba. That's what he's doing here. We're just, you know, on a zoom flight right into his heart. It's an amazing thing that zoom named themselves that right <laughs> we are we're zooming about all over the world but you know what's really funny is uh vj says that uh when you're kind of drunk and you're wobbly they call them zoomies so here we are zooming on zoom on zoom <laughs> i think that's just great we're sort of like punch drunk on baba's love you know <laughs> yeah zoomies and prakash Are you there? Prakash, you have your hand up? Okay. Susan, you want to go first and we'll come back to Prakash. Hi, y'all. I'm here with Daryl. If you can see him in our kitchen. Yay! Yay! There's another shy folk. Yeah, there's a shy folk, right? But he actually performed on the center not too long ago, which was a first. I was there and it was excellent. I know. Thank you. Uh, well, I just want to chime in with all of these thoughts and appreciations for you and my friend Ruthie, who told me about it today or I wouldn't be here uh, even though I'm in my kitchen doing stuff I heard it all and I Charles you touch my heart every time you talk it's just so beautiful and I love the way you tear up and remember what it was like because uh, it just it just that's where the light comes in I've been reading that a quote by Rumi which is so beautiful <laughs> the crack what's in your, I could share that, but I don't have it right. Well, I could share it. But anyway, uh, it won't take too much time, but 
We do have a pretty funny joke if you all are up for it. Always. Okay. I'm going to let Daryl tell it because he's the one who found it. <laughs> Can you go on camera? Yeah, he's on camera there. Hi. Yeah, it's just a wonderful thing uh, to have this Zoom. I hardly participate much, but I really, the few times I come is just fabulous. And once again, here it is. So I'd love to share this. And the idea of having jokes ready is a great thought. I've been thinking this for a while and now it's been reinforced today. So got to have these things ready to go. This one happened to come out I, uh, at a birthday party. I actually didn't get to say it at the party, but then it came another perfect time to say it. It's about a guy who was a, um, he was a monk for, for quite a long time. And he, he got um, sort of disenchanted with, uh, with the process of things, the way things were unfolding there. And he decided he's just gonna go out in the world and be by himself. And so he took off into the world and, and up into the Appalachians and uh, he got a piece of land where there was hardly anybody around. And just him and his dog, he had his hound dog named Mace. So he and Mace just hanging out there and uh, Mace had a habit of just, you know, like he just ate grass, didn't need much food, but he did have to give him some food. And so he'd go into town about once a week and do an odd job for somebody and get food for himself and, you know, get something back for the, for the dog. So uh, this particular day, he gets into town and the job is a plumbing job. He doesn't have this wrench that he needs. And it's, it's really a terrible thing because it's kind of a long walk to get to, to this, this woman's house he's trying to help. So he goes all the way back and he's pretty sad about this idea, but he looks outside his house and there, you know, the dog's been munching on the grass. There's a little glint of a piece of metal and sure enough, there's his wrench. And he's so happy about this. He's just think, I've got to, I've got to sing a song about this or write a poem or something. And he, he starts out by saying, a grazing mace, how sweet the hound that found a wrench for me. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, got to keep them coming. Okay, well, thanks so that's much. That's fantastic. We just all want to keep that love flowing for Baba. That's what we have to do now. Thank you. <laughs> Jay Baba. Yeah, Jay Baba. Oh. I don't know how you wrapped your word, you wrapped your tongue around the words and didn't mess them up. That was great, Daryl. It's in the delivery, isn't it? Uh, that one yeah, would be a real the, problem if you messed up the delivery. <laughs> in the fellowship, in the love here, this is really sweet. That's something to really groove on. Thank you. Jayba. Yeah. A lot of your songs, Ruth, and your songs are just amazingly beautiful and touching, deeply touching. I wish uh, you would uh, concert. Uh, yeah, well, I'll be singing more and more. I think uh, uh, it's sort of a change in my life. We'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, from your lips to Baba's ear. <laughs> you know we're always open so Good. always thank looking to fill our time slots so uh can't wait okay thank you yay hey, Baba. prakash sally jay baba jay baba <laughs> Like Ruthie yeah, yeah. said, um, everything has been said and we're so happy we're here, you know. Yeah. And it's like um, an opportunity to serve Baba um, through Arthi um, on Saturday morning, Sunday mornings and Prakash's slots when he does it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, all the connections we make, it's, 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 it's something that we really look forward to. Yeah. yeah. And when Prakash is in India, um, when he does his traveling, this is my Zen zone, as I would say. Yeah. It gives me a lot of peace and, you know, calmness when I attend Arati. So. My, my only hope is at the end of um, this year, everybody should know Hindi. Because, ah. uh, whenever I sing in Hindi, everybody says it's good. So, <laughs> and I never sang before. And thanks to Zoom for uh, making me sing for, for, for Baba. Baba. For Baba. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, I particularly mm -hmm. like being with everybody. I mean, the, the, when, the moment I open the screen, the, the love that pours out, uh, it just makes me uh, so happy. Jai Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Angela, through Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Jai Baba. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, and all the time that you put in to help make Baba Zoom work, it's just fantastic. So many thanks. You fill in in all sorts of places and host meetings that you weren't expecting to host. And that's, that's kind of uh, how this whole thing holds together is that we all just sort of pop in and fill in and you notice mm -hmm. on the participant screen how many people are logged in as Baba Zoom and we just all participate in helping the meeting flow and someone's forgotten to press record. Anybody can press record. It's fine. You know, like we don't have to have like only one person is in charge. Of you know, the other person. day when I went to uh, Amartiti and there's this guy who comes to me and says, oh, I have, you are so-and-so. Then I said, whoa, do I know you? <laughs> well, <laughs> then he said, well, I saw you on Zoom before. And, uh, you know, that's how we make connections. And I've known so many new people just being on Zoom. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Big I've Baba gotten, family. I've mm -hmm. gotten that feedback that people who are, you know, like Karen Talbot, she said that, wow, we're famous because like these recordings go out and all sorts of people are watching and suddenly you're like a known entity, like a, almost like a TV personality, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And these late night chats, everyone knows everyone and they've mm -hmm. never met them. They haven't even come to a live Zoom and they know everything about your Baba journey and, and, uh, are following with great interest. It's almost like a, almost like daytime television. You know, we're watching the soap opera as it unfolds, but these are real people, you know, and I guess on some level, Baba must feel the same way. <laughs> He's watching this soap opera unfold and, and here we are in the middle of it, but we have Baba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting to hear Charles and Jeff mm -hmm. and who else? I mean, everybody, we're just everybody, so, everybody yeah. who's willing we grab them. <laughs> yeah. But you know, as Baba lovers, we are very lucky. We have a perspective that the average person does not have. So when we bring that perspective together into the community, you know, we can let go of all that extra drama that uh, we don't really need in our lives. You know, we can just sort of let those things go. For those people who think that this is their only life, that they've got to do it all in this life and then make it to heaven. Wow. Think of the pressure. <laughs> so much pressure to get it right in this lifetime. It's a lot. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Hey, Baba. Charles, I feel like we have to excuse you. Go take care of those dogs. Yes, yes, go. You don't go have to stay for this. <laughs> well, I, I, I just uh, it's been so happy listening to everybody sharing and it, it's very touching. It's uh, very very touching it it makes me feel baba is uh so alive and working so hard with us and in us and through us i mean that's yeah, yeah. so we're very very blessed very blessed so thank you all i, I do yeah. need to take care of the animals <laughs> animals <laughs> yeah my little zoo over here <laughs> uh, but but much love to you all yeah, yeah. thank you again, Jay Angela. Baba. Jay baba. Jay baba. Jay baba, charles Come back. speaking Speaking yeah. to that point, I, I very much was curious what the present tense of Baba was in the world, you know, because so many centers have completely fallen into that habit of all their guests are only people who've met Baba. Oh, okay. So then some of them have met the Mandali and they're telling stories that are 50, 70 years old, which is no problem, <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> but uh, because those stories are very real and very present. But what is the present tense for everyone else. You know, there's so many Baba lovers who haven't met Baba or haven't met the Mandali or haven't spent a lot of time with them or various other things. Some who've never even been to India, you know what I mean? So what is, what is that? You know, what is the well, present tense? All, all of those people, especially the young people who have been through the youth Sahabas and all that, that uh, generation that Baba has uh, molded, they were with him so many times before, yes. you know, Yes. No, I mean, that's that, why I don't use the word young. I just don't use the word young because... Or as Elizabeth used to say, you know, when I'd say somebody new has come to the center, Annie Boo, she'd say, well, just remember, they may be new to us, but they're not new to Bala. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, we, we fortunately, I used to think too, well, after Elizabeth and Kitty, who would want to be at the center? You know, I mean, you know, my naivete, like, well, Aren't, isn't that the heart of the center to, to see them and same with Mondly people but actually you know there are Elizabeth and Kitties in this Zoom right now there are Mondly people here and there are people 
you know, who've known Baba forever. So, uh, and there will always be, but it'll always be a small circle of people that Baba allows to be his lovers. I mean, he's for everybody because he's in everybody and he's the avatar. So his love will affect every living thing, but there are only <clears throat> some that Baba says, he says, not me, I saw my idea. He says, I am for the select few. So the lover to the beloved is a, is, a, is a particular role to play and we're just blessed to play the role. So there'll always be the lovers, you know, whether he's in the body or not, whether there are Mondly people around or whether they've taken another body, it doesn't matter. Well, there'll always be the lover and the beloved and we're, we're the lovers. We're the lovers, so. <laughs> yeah. And we're all equidistant from Baba. That's yeah. the thing. Baba is very clear about that. There's no one closer, further away, this and that. Baba may use his hand in a different way. He uses the eye, as he said it. He put that way. You know, we have different purposes, but nobody is closer or further. And uh, that's why this spirit of his love will always be as long as his lovers keep it alive. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to do was have a recorded history or, a, you know, a, a kind of snapshot of what this time is like, you know, for us yeah. regular Baba folk, you know, yeah. because one of these days, I guarantee you, it's going to be a religion. We can't prevent this from becoming a religion. <laughs> well, that's right. It'll be religions, probably. There'll be lots of them, you know. Baba-isms. Yeah, but that's the thing, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. The lovers go on, right? Right. And they come back when he comes back. And, you know, this one or that religion will come and go. But the lover and the beloved, that doesn't come or go. But imagine, <laughs> you know, in 200 years, these recordings will be so precious because no, no, it's no. just us being us and just being with Baba like he's, he's yeah. present and whatever religion happens down the road they'll be able to find we when we come back we'll be able to find these recordings and go ah oh, yes this is home this is this is this is what i remember you yeah. know this is just us with our hair down not being all proper and and prepped for you know national television <laughs> just us well i put on a nice shirt I oh well to... that's true <laughs> you, you did but you didn't do the hair and makeup i made an effort at least. <laughs> I, I don't know if you have a hair and makeup guy there. I know, but I I kind of made an effort. You made an effort. You made an effort. You know, at 73, you have to make a big effort. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. At any no. age, I'm sure. This before Charles leaves, I just yes. to share this. Before. I've been clearing out my office, and I found this little piece of paper. And it says, good morning. This is God. I will be looking after all your concerns today. I will not be needing any of your help. So relax <laughs> and enjoy your day. With love and blessing, Baba. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Baba. Well, much and love to you all. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you. Jay Baba. Baba, Charles. Thank you. I hear you. Baba, Charles. <laughs> Oh, hey, Baba, welcome. everyone, we're going to have to leave in a moment. Okay. Hey, Baba. We have a couple more hands up. Yeah. I'm we gonna do. Have we have to leave, leave too. Jay yeah, Baba. No problem. Hey, we Baba, have a couple so hands up. Bye. 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 I want him to be my my guest on the next RTG. Oh, RTG. good idea. Good idea. Well, That's how we get him started. Reel him in. That's how we get him started. Jay Bala. Marilyn. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela. This has been just fantastic, everybody. So Jay Baba to you all. And I just wanted to say how much help I feel I've received from you all and actually from Baba through you as well. And I am very, very grateful. And I wanted to read this um, from Effort and Grace. This is what I read this morning. It was the very next reading in the book. So I thought it was very sweet um, to celebrate our 
third year anniversary for the worldwide Baba Zoom. And it's entitled Freedom Through Love and Love Through Freedom. I'll only read the first paragraph. Love is the medium of exchange between the master and the disciple. So we have to develop our love, love of God incarnate, love of the Christ. As we make efforts to love him, he helps us in, in his own ways, in ways we cannot imagine. His love, a river of truth, power, light, and strength inundates us. And far more powerful than any illusion, it erodes away our addiction to the creation. We need to develop one pointed focus on him through love and self-surrender. And it's just really, um, that's what this loving Baba Zoom platform is really speaking. Baba is orchestrating everything. And I feel that he's actually brought us all closer together and closer to him and um, helping, actually it's helped me to develop more one pointed focus on him through love and self surrender. And another passage that I read on Baba Zoom RT, which I think has helped me and maybe others, I don't know. Except God, all things are a passing show. God is never changing. All else is ever changing. So thank you, Baba. Thank you all. And thank you for the Maya that you slap in my face and, the, and for the beautiful loving experiences that you put in my dreams. And thank you for this beautiful platform of people who accept and listen and um, uh, just um, share their grace and mercy from you and love and spirit and lightness and the glory of your being in them and in all of us. And it's all beautiful and it's all Baba the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> it's all Baba doing everything. And oh my gosh, Baba, we are holding on. And this has helped us to hold together and to hold to you. And may we continue in your love and grace to bloom into the beautiful divine flowers that we were meant to be in your great, great divine garden of love. So thank you, Angela, for without you, nothing would have been happening here. <laughs> oh my God, it's like a whole new world that opened up for me as well as everybody. So stay blessed. I love you all and much, much love. Thank you. Jay, Baba, Marilyn. Beautiful. That was like a prayer. Mwah. Beautiful. Jay, Baba. Jay, Baba. Thank you. And Elizabeth. Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, I also want to thank you. And for me, Baba Zoom has been like the linkage, the, the inner links that Baba talks about. That through Baba Zoom over the last few years, and it was definitely a godsend during the pandemic. And it's still a godsend um, for helping so many people in so many different ways, whether it's need for support emotionally or spiritually or need for a laugh or a song or whatever. There's so many aspects of our, of our being that are touched by it. And, um, and I'm, I'm truly grateful. I haven't been on as much as before, but I have certainly experienced the dog sled experience. And, uh, oh, brother, <laughs> what a ride. <laughs> it's the Iditarod of this the spiritual path. <laughs> anyway, um, I couldn't be on all of the time um, because I had I didn't have to, but I took a call from my sister, whom I don't get to speak too much, and um, so I couldn't hear everything. But another great thing about Baba Zoom is that this meeting was recorded, and I'll be able to go back and listen to Charles. And I really loved the um, the focus on the humor 
And of course, one of my good friends, um, Susan of Daryl and Susan team, she has got the best sense of humor and is always say, doing and saying something humorous. And so it was uh, interesting to me that Charles chose that. And I'll look forward to, to seeing that as well. And, um, and then the linkages, the inner linkages, they, they move from this world of electrons and, you know, you know, the, the internet <laughs> into real life. Um, you know, at the recent visit to the center, I know I met at least 10 people that I felt I knew that I had been, uh, that I had met on Baba Zoom, including Angela and Cliff and, um, I don't, I, there were, there were at least Stu Baker, a lot of people, a lot of people I met, you know, and then of course, old friends, but uh, they, they, they seem like old friends to me, you know, and to just see them in person and give them a hug and, you know, know they're real. And it's just, uh, it's really exciting and uh, heartwarming. And um, I just want to commend again, your particular talents. Um, such dedication, such consistency. I could never in this world do what you do. I, I just could never be that consistent. But um, boy, uh, it's, it's just an amazing, and it is true, it does take, it does take a village. And um, it's so nice to be able to be in a place where values are shared, you know, and that there is support for this way of viewing life that's different, that's not the typical thing we see in everyday life, and that gives us a boost. And, and the Baba Zoom, some of the people that I've met on Baba Zoom, they're starting to appear in my dreams. I mean, Diane and Betty and I don't think you've come in there yet, but I mean, it's just amazing who shows up. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Every, everybody. And thank you to Michelle for her special song, Stranger, that she often sings for me. And your Bluebird song, it's not called that, but you know, that's my joke. And uh, there's so many things to be thankful for. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Ono pono, how do you say it? A hono mono pono. A pono pono pono. I'm reminded of that wonderful song. But anyway, thank you very much. And Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Shared interests. That's exactly, that's exactly what I was hoping to find, you know, that we would have so many different kinds of meetings that somebody would share your interest in that thing and then you could get together and do stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's the getting together, you know, that's, that's, that's the healing part. I'd like to say a thank you prayer. Dear beloved, we thank you so much for this beautiful, loving RT that you have given us for retreat, reflection, release, restoration, special time together and a help to remember you. We thank you for all in our Artie Baba Zoom family. We thank you especially for Angela and all the hosts and hostesses and background workers that help make this so loving and possible. We thank you for all of our loved ones, all on our prayer list. Help us focus on your divine light and not the darkness. Please help heal and protect us all. We pray this for all of us in the whole world. Help us release everything to you and fill us only with you and your love and light and help us love you and each other more and more, to forgive each other more and more, to help each other more and more, to trust you more and more. We love you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Jay Baba. Our praying heart. Marjipan is our praying heart. Yes. Amazing. So beautiful. Thank you, Marge. Perfect timing, Marge. That was beautiful. Thank you. 
And a stranger amongst our midst. Hi, Priya. Don't call me a stranger, please. Okay. So strange. Yeah. And Mara T, uh, initiator, and our beautiful meeting there. Wow. Oh, thank you, Miguel. We love our long-lost reunion cousin, Priya. <laughs> Well, I keep popping in every now and then, but um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. One is thank you to each one of you, truly. I think I still see myself as a new Baba lover, although he got me in his fall six years ago, and it wasn't until three years ago that I knew about him, uh, you know, much. But I guess. Uh, I was looking for how to live, what to live for. And in, you know, being part of Baba Zoom and meeting all of you and getting to hear you share, uh, you know, your stories has been the answer. I think it was Baba who said that give love, receive love, gather love, and everything else will dissolve in that love. And this Baba Zoom is truly the manifestation of that for me. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're all about the love. You bring so much love when you show up. Thank you, Priya. You're fulfilling your life purpose. We really missed you, Priya. As host. Priya, Priya. you promised me to you Share promised me to read, you. A, a, read yeah. a poem. I can't remember what it has been so long. <laughs> yeah, look forward to it. Though. I will show Bob up. Will make it happen. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank very you busy. Priya, I, I think you're very busy in your in your quote real in life. My, <laughs> in my job, yes. I get that. Been, many many of us are, are are retired, so that's that's hard. It's hard to balance life, isn't it? I miss you guys truly. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that Angela decided to record and put it up on YouTube because last year I had the honor to meet Jeff at Mehrabad and we were just sitting in the parking area and random people came up to him saying they know him from Zoom. Yeah. So what Prakash said is very true. We may still be in hundreds, but there are thousands of people watching us mm -hmm. and this channel and you know all the conversations and the meetings. It's really creating a ripple. Yeah. yeah. I want to mention what the Mandali told us when we were there, especially Eric. And Eric is is the person that when he says something, it's it's it, you know. He would not say something just to be, you know, just to say. He said, All people who come to Baba now have come to Baba now, have been with him before many times. Mm -hmm. New. Even though you experience being new, when I came, I felt that I was completely new. And that's what I heard from Eric. All people who come to Baba now. And it's also what I heard from Bauji. Bauji said within this 100 years, every 20 years, there's a wave of Baba lovers who have been with him and come. So this 100 year until uh, 2069, anyone coming within the 20 years span have been with Baba before. So not only uh, got Prasad from Baba and been in a Sahaba or something and bowed down to him once. No, it's like it's like what um, Charles said when he before he left. He said, "Everyone that has been is here, is a true Baba lover from the heart that has come and was selected by Baba to be here right now." You're not new. You're not new. Yes, thank you. We miss you and we miss you. We'll be glad to have you come back more when you can. Very, very, very soon. I'm working on it. I miss hosting you happy too. That's good news. That's good news. <laughs> but Bob also said, take care of your responsibilities. So, Diana, a very, very all around volunteer. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, Jay Baba. You know, I. I feel like Baba Zoom is just one big circle of love. And um, and being a circle, everyone is always part of it. 
and it can, it's ever expanding. And I'm getting an image of um, like people dancing in a circle. And if you've ever been to a circle dance and you know you come new to the dance, you approach the circle as people are dancing, you find two people whose hands are clasped, you put your hands there, somehow they open up, now you're holding their hands and you're still part of it. And then if it's time that you feel maybe you should step out, you step out of the circle, you can clap, you can sing, you can't not be part of it. And I, I think Baba Zoom is very much like that. And, um, you know, when you go to a party and people break up into groups, you only have your, you, you have that experience, but something might be going on over there that would be lovely to be part of, but you're here having something else that's very nice to be part of. Here, everyone is always part of it together. And so it's so inclusive and very beautiful for that reason. And I love it. So thank you so much, Angela, J. Bob. I have to, beautiful image. I have to come in again because it's so amazing. Uh, Diana is uh, hosting the this horse's uh, Zoom. She, she's doing such a great job, really. I mean, it's so wonderful to be there. And what is interesting is she talking about the circle, and we are reading now in the discourse Zoom about the circle, Baba circle. And I always have this image that the circle is not a, a, a one that was, but a spiral that keeps on being. And uh, so uh, we are a circle, we are. <laughs> I love that image. And I love that image of joining in and then stepping out and nothing's broken because the circle is continuously whole. Beautiful image. Mm. Yeah, something else you said, but anyway, it'll come back to me. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, let's have a quick moment of appreciation for Baba. We'll, uh, we'll just uh, have a quick silence and then we'll say Avatar Meh Baba Kije in a few minutes. A few moments. Jay Baba, if you'd like to unmute. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Jay Baba. Wow, it's a wower. It's a wower. Every year it's just getting more wow. Hi, more, more, still yet more. Still yet more. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye, everyone.